Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're going to be going over all the video equipment that I've accumulated over the years that I put into use when making YouTube videos. This is probably only going to appeal to a small fraction of my viewers. This will be a longer video because there's a lot of stuff to go over. But I thought I would share this with you because I don't want you making the same mistakes I did. And I'm going to have some suggestions on some entry level camera gear that you can pick up if you're interested in this sort of thing. So stay tuned. Basically what you see here is the result of three years of trial and error. And when I first started YouTube, I only had a Galaxy Note 2 phone, which in 2012 was the top of the line. It has a fairly decent camera. It has the capability to do uh, full HD, which is 1080p. And that's pretty much what you want to achieve with YouTube nowadays. You want your videos to be full HD. I know it's a pain in the ass to upload and it takes a lot of space on your hard drive, but it's worth it. So for most people, particularly bloggers, this is all you're gonna need. This combined with a good video editing program that will suffice. Now, if you're doing gear review stuff or you're doing nature, outdoor, wilderness stuff, you're gonna want to step it up a notch in terms of the other camera gear I'm gonna talk about. Also, if you are doing stuff in front of the camera, it does help to step up your camera game as well because the sensors on these phones are fairly small, so in spite of the fact that they can get a high resolution image, the amount of detail and the colors and the depth of field is not always as rich as it would be when using a camera like a DSLR, which I'll talk about. Everything you see here is entry level, but it's sufficient for the task of making quality videos. So you don't need to spend tens of thousands of dollars I'm gonna post links to all this stuff in the description. If you are interested in picking it up, you can do so through my Amazon store. So generally speaking, there are three types of cameras, but for the sake of today's discussion, I'm gonna introduce a fourth, which is a smartphone camera. Basically, that's much like a point and shoot camera. Point and shoot camera has no removable lenses. It's not an action cam like I'm gonna talk about. And it's generally speaking something which is also going to suffice for you know YouTube video production. There's also DSLRs, which are the high-end cameras, and those ones have removable lenses, they have much better sensors, and a lot of more customizable features than any other type of camera. Then of course there's the action camera, which is great for those outdoor shots. It allows for that wide-angle vision so you can get in more of the scene. You're definitely going to want something that has 60 frames per second if you're doing a lot of fast action sequences in order to pick up all that detail because if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, that means that the camera is only taking 30 pictures a second. So if I was to move really fast, you wouldn't see all the fine aspects of that movement. You would want uh, something that can do 60 frames per second in order to basically see everything that's going on. It's just more fluid and it, it looks a lot better. Now, this camera case that I got here, I'm gonna show you the gear that's inside in a minute is not a Pelican case. It's actually one I got from Princess Auto. It's a toolbox. It's basically the exact same case minus the high price tag of a Pelican case. These are very rugged military grade cases. They're waterproof, they're heavy, but you're gonna want that to keep all your camera gear organized because once you start accumulating this camera equipment, it can easily get unorganized and that can make your life a pain in the butt. So I would recommend something like this, a hard shell case, which is rugged and durable. This one is called the waterproof tool case. You can get these Pelican cases like this, but they cost about $200 for the exact same thing, pretty much with a different brand name logo on it. So shop around for toolboxes for camera cases. All right, so some of the things we're gonna talk about are accessories, we're gonna talk about audio equipment, and that's one thing you're gonna wanna focus on. If you do have a smartphone, you're going to want to pay attention to the part of this video where I talk about audio because you're definitely still going to want to step up your audio a bit. I see a lot of YouTubers who are in their third or fourth year of making videos. They have thousands of subscribers and they're still using the audio, the omnidirectional mic on their smartphones or the one that's built into their DSLR. And the audio is just terrible. It picks up a lot of background noise and you can totally tell the difference between that and something like a lavalier, which uh, is gonna cut all of that uh, background noise and it's just gonna focus 
the the rec receiver in one direction. First, I want to talk about this SJ Cam. So this is the M20, and this just recently came out. I'm gonna overlay some images of what this thing's capable of, and it's probably one of the cheapest yet most high-performing uh, action cams that you can get right now. As you can see here, it's a different form factor than a lot of the GoPros. SJ Cam does make the standard action cam size, which is more rectangular. It's wider and it's a bit shorter. And these things progressively are still getting smaller and smaller. Of course, when you buy this, you get all the accessories. You get the waterproof case. You get all the, you know, the clips uh, in order to adhere this to various things. Like there's chest mounts. Uh, there's a head headset rig. There's a flotation device which attaches to it so it doesn't sink if you do drop it in the water. Things to mount it to your bicycle, all sorts of mounts. And that's the great thing about action cams is they allow for that. And you don't really have to worry about where you're pointing the camera because the wide angle captures so much. I think it captures about 170 degrees of the image. Great thing about this one is that you can adjust the point of view or the field of view. So if you wanted just to do a standard image and you didn't want that wide angle vision, this one will allow for that. It is a 2K resolution, so that means it's 2800 by 2100 pixels. Now, really, I know 4K is all the rage, but people who don't do video editing don't understand the computing power that you need in order to edit 4K. Now, I have a computer that has a Pentium i7 processor, which is a very fast processor. I have about eight gigs of RAM and I still struggle to edit 4K footage. I can do it, but it takes a long time. It's choppy, it's glitchy, and I just have to cross my fingers when I render it to hope that it turns out all right. So personally, for most people, I would recommend going with a 2K camera. Honestly, 1080p is gonna be good for many years to come. It's gonna be a long time before the internet has the bandwidth and capability or people's wireless connections at home have the ability to stream 4K at relatively fast speed without having to wait an hour. So 4K right now is not practical. Yes, you can do it, but it's not necessary. 1080p at 60 frames per second is the standard you should be going for for an action cam. And this will do 1080p at 60 frames per second. Now this does have something called 4K interpolated. And you got to be careful with action cams because there's a lot of them who claim that they're 4K, but they're actually interpolated. And what that means is it, it doubles the pixels. It basically just copies a pixel and it fills in the gaps and it blows it up to 4K. So it takes a 2K image and it adds a bunch of pixels in there to make it 4K. So you're not really getting any more detail. It's just making it watchable on a 4K screen. And honestly, like I say, you don't need that. The great thing about this one is that there's an onboard audio, there's video on a lot of GoPros, you don't have that. So another thing of this is the gyro. So it has a built-in gyroscope, meaning that you can basically minimize the amount of shakiness. So with most action cams, and because typically they're mounted to things which are moving, or you're gonna be moving when you're using it, you're gonna to wanna to minimize the shake. And I tell you that the gyroscope, the difference that gyroscope makes between this and the other SJ cam I have that doesn't have that is night and day. I mean, it's incredible how much shakiness this relieves having that built in gyroscope there. There is a remote control that you can buy with this separately. It's a $20 watch and you can basically control this with this. This will also stream to your phone. So if you wanted the image on here blown up, you can use, it has Wi-Fi built in that doesn't rely on a wireless connection in your home, but it uses that Wi-Fi signal to communicate with your phone. So wherever you are, you can broadcast what's on here to your phone. And of course you can control what happens on here with this which comes in very handy when you have this mounted you know when it's out of uh, reach from where you are or if it's mounted in the waterproof case and you want to uh, control the shutter 
so that's uh, very useful. And there's lots of other features. So it's a 16 megapixel camera on here. It takes very good pictures. There's motion detection. There's a car mode so you can loop it if you wanted to use this as a dash cam. That comes in handy. Uh, just a lot of cool features on here. There's burst mode, all those things. So I would definitely recommend the SJ Cam M20. Probably one of the most cost effective, but very, very nice quality uh, images that you get off this thing. It does have a Sony sensor in there which is a high quality uh, photo sensor definitely going to want to make sure that you have a good memory card in there if you're recording 2k i've made the mistake so many times of just buying the biggest memory card i could get for the cheapest price and i won't do that again now that i'm getting into the higher end photography stuff because you really do need something that has a really fast write speed so if you see on, uh, you can talk to anybody at your local, you know, photography uh, retail outlet, they'll be able to explain all this to you in greater detail. But you want something that's class 10. And you also, I would say, you know, I mean, you don't need a thousand times speed, 150 megabytes per second. But just to be safe, if you ever did want to do 4K stuff, you're definitely going to want to make sure that it has that class 10 logo and the three on there. I'm pretty sure the three, it just, uh, it basically means that it's capable of doing 4K if you wanted to. And 1080p at 60 frames per second can still be pretty demanding. So you're definitely gonna want a reliable SD card. Trust me, invest the extra money that it's gonna cost you to get a good memory card. Because the last thing you wanna do is to go out and take a bunch of amazing footage images and all that stuff and then the files are corrupted and this has happened to me so many times by using poor memory cards who have a very large capacity and they may have a good read speed but they don't have a good write speed so that's very important to consider the large uh, mini SD cards micro SD cards like the 128 gigabytes they have 200 gigabytes now those are great for storage of stuff. So if you're just copying files and you need to store information, they're great for a bug out bag if you wanna store a bunch of PDFs or books or how-to videos on there. But in terms of actually shooting footage from a camera and writing it to the card itself, you're gonna to wanna to get a good memory card. So one more thing with cell phones, a very cheap fix that's gonna add significantly to the capabilities of your camera of your smartphone camera are these lenses that you can get. Now these cost between $15 to $30 on Amazon. So you can get a wide angle lens, you can get a fisheye lens, which is basically like a super wide angle lens. And you can also get a macro lens. So there's, it really will increase the function of your phone depending on the kind of case you have on there. You might have to take the case off to make sure that the, it's even. But it basically allows you to use your smartphone like you would an action cam now obviously it's not going to be <laughs> gonna have to get loki away from the mic here um now obviously it's not going to be as durable and robust as an action cam but you know what for 15 bucks if you really want to broaden the capabilities of your smartphone camera get some lenses this is called a three axis gimbal all right so what this does i'm not sure you can see that there i'll overlay some uh, video it, it allows you to basically stabilize the camera in three dimensions so every movement i make it compensates for it by going in the opposite direction so this is great for when you're walking around it's night and day if you're holding your phone and you're pointing it at yourself with a selfie stick that can help to minimize the amount of shakiness but it doesn't matter how still you are there's going to be a lot of shakiness this almost gets rid of that entirely and this is a fairly pricey unit these things start at around 200 dollars they're called gimbals, three axis gimbals, but they work amazingly well. And it really is almost like alien technology. Uh, there's different modes on it. So you can do that where it's just pointing in one direction constantly, no matter where I move it, it's locked in on one. And you can get these for drones, which I don't have here. Drones are a whole other level of photography and video editing that I don't know lots about. Go to Massachusetts Prepper channel. He has a lot of videos on drones and some high-end drones that he uses the dji phantom is kind of the going drone right now but uh, you're going to get some amazing shots with that because they use the same stabilizing feature and they shoot in 4k so 
it's basically as professional as it gets. It's Hollywood grade uh, camera gear with those DJI Phantom drones. Anyways, this is a pretty cool little feature for your smartphone. So this is the Nikon Coolpix. Basically a point and shoot is, as it says, you don't have to do a lot of manual adjusting of the ISO or the shutter speed or uh, the aperture, things like that. Basically you just point and shoot, it's all automatic. You focus, that's about all you need to do. This one comes with a 34 times optical zoom. That's another distinction you wanna understand is between optical zoom and digital zoom. Optical zoom is real zoom. So basically that means that you're using the lenses to see further, like you would with a telescope or binoculars or something like that. All digital zoom is, it's really fake zoom. It's just taking a high resolution image and then you're able to zoom in on various parts of it and it's gonna be lower quality as you zoom in. With an optical zoom, you maintain the resolution and the quality at further ranges out. I would recommend if you were to get a camera and you're doing YouTube videos, one very useful feature is to have a screen which can flip around so you can see what you're recording. I don't have that on my cameras. I kind of wish I did, but uh, there were other features within my budget that I needed to consider. This one does not have a microphone input. For YouTube video production, I would recommend something like a DSLR. I did a lot of research before investing in a DSLR camera, and honestly, I really wish I would have done it a lot sooner because I've done so many videos just with my smartphone that would have looked so much better had I shot them with this entry-level Nikon D3300 DSLR. It's a $500 camera, so it's an investment. It does have removable lenses. I'm not gonna take the lens off, but you can remove the lens um, and you can put different lenses on there. There's hundreds of different lenses you can get that allow you to see further. They allow you to have a better depth of field. Basically what that is is when you can focus on one part of the image and everything in the black background is blurred out. So there's that nice contrast and distinction. It's that really sharp uh, resolution of what you're focusing on compared to what's in the background. So that's a very important feature and that's really one of the defining features with what makes a good image and what doesn't. You can't really achieve that on a lot of smartphones. Now I should say that I am shooting this video here with an LG G4 smartphone which can do 4K at 30 frames per second but it still you know is limited because of the small sensor size. Uh, compare the sensor here, which is very large, to the one in your phone, which is maybe one-tenth the size, and you understand why uh, it's limited. But I did a lot of research, and honestly, the Nikon D3300 probably has everything you need to really start up. If you're just doing YouTube videos, you don't need the highest quality production gear. You need something that's going to be able to take decent video and decent images. And this allows you to do that. As I said before, you want to have extra batteries. Uh, this is a remote control for the Nikon DSLR. That's going to come in very handy if you want to take stills of yourself doing things and you can't be right by the camera, you have to be in front of the camera. So having a remote control and having a camera that is capable of having that remote control is absolutely crucial. One main thing you're going to want to look for is a microphone input. That's huge with these kind of cameras because uh, the onboard microphone sucks. And if you don't, if you do have a camera that doesn't have this, you can still use a wireless lavalier. And I have this one, it's by Rode. It's quite expensive for what it is, and I'm very disappointed that they charge so much for this, but it works. It's about 100 bucks, uh, probably in the US, it's about 70 bucks. And basically you plug this into your smartphone and you record the audio into your smartphone then you go into your video editing program afterwards and you overlay the audio track onto the video, which is what I'm gonna do with this video, only I'm using a different microphone right now that I'll talk about in a minute. But this is great for when you're outdoors, you're definitely gonna want a wireless la uh, lavalier. This is gonna get rid of all of that annoying background noise that you hear, and it makes a huge difference in terms of quality, and it makes your videos much easier to watch and I can't remember what the quote was, but it was something like 50% of you know movies are the audio track in the movies. So audio plays a huge role for your audience. 
what else can I say about DSLRs? Well, obviously there's a lot of uh, customizable features on here so you can adjust everything. There's different filters. Um, just get a DSLR. If you're really serious about YouTube video editing and you're gonna be doing a lot of stuff where you're standing in front of the camera, just bite the bullet now and get a DSLR so that years from now you can look back at your videos and they'll still be of decent quality. But I'll post a link to this one in the description. I think it's probably one of the best entry level based on the research I did. Most people, most professional photographers would agree with that assessment. What I have here is a shotgun mic. So you can get a road shotgun mic. I got this Tech Pro one because it was on sale. It was like half price and with the DSLR, the Nikon D3300, you have this here that you can use for microphones or flash and you basically just stick this thing in there and that screws down on there and this plugs into the side here and that's going to allow you to get what we call a shotgun uh, direction. So it's going to give you a wide cone but it's only going to pick up sound which is within that cone so it's not gonna if I'm pointing this that way it's not gonna pick up a lot of sound back here we'll pick up a little bit that uh, echo is off but it's not gonna pick up the majority of the sound it's only gonna be picking up in that direction there so shotgun mics are good for outside honestly I actually don't use it much I stick to the lavalier but uh, this is great if you have multiple people talking in one direction and you're you're not moving around a whole lot this is a Seek thermal imaging system. This is for use with a smartphone. I've done extensive reviews on this on the Prepared Minds channel and my own channel. Can come in handy for shooting certain gear review videos on YouTube. Uh, what else do I got in here? So this is my Zendure A8. This is 26,000 milliamp capacity battery pack. Definitely gonna want juice when you're out in the field. I'm also using right here, which is called a, a Blue Yeti. If you're doing narration or if you're just doing, you know, vlogging, uh, anything like that, this is the mic you want. I did a lot of research on this as well, and I do not regret buying this microphone one iota. It is absolutely wonderful in terms of the difference that it makes in terms of audio quality. There's a lot of different functions on it. You can control the gain. It's a USB powered microphone, so it plugs right into your computer. It's what I'm recording with right now. So it picks up everything. It's very much like a shotgun mic if you want it to be, but it does have omnidirectional features as well. So it really is, uh, as they claim, the ultimate uh, USB microphone for professionals. And it makes a huge difference. I just can't stress that enough. Now I have used other microphones. This is the MXL. And this one is cool because it can plug directly into your smartphone. So there is uh, a jack there. So if you are shooting with your smartphone and you want something that you know gets professional grade, grade quality, I'll post a link to that. It's gonna be slightly better than the Rode Lavalier, obviously, because it's much bigger. Honestly, I would say the only two microphones you really need are a Lavalier and a blue microphone. You really only need a shotgun mic if there's lots of scenes where you're doing with other people where you need to pick up multiple sounds and obviously one lavalier is only going to pick up your voice not theirs and if you're outside shooting stuff i'm sure people like prepared mind when he has guests on his show use some sort of shotgun mic i'm assuming in order to just pick up their audio and not pick up all the sounds in the background all right so just a few more things and we're going to wrap this up so tripods i would strongly recommend spending a significant amount on a tripod i know how it seems when I first started shooting YouTube videos this is embarrassing but I didn't even have a tripod I had a stick I had some duct tape and that's what I used I figured why the hell would anybody want to invest in something like a tripod it's just something to put something on it seems absurd that you would spend hundreds of dollars on that so what I did eventually I cracked and I went and bought this $20 cheap tripod which sufficed for a short period of time until I dropped it once and it broke so that's the thing with tripods, uh, but the, they are essential. You absolutely need them. Then I stepped it up to the one that's being used to shoot this video now. And that's kind of a middle of the road one. It's about 50 bucks. You want, if you're gonna put something like this on it, I would recommend, and this is just a rule I made up, 
that you should at least spend 20% of what the unit that you're putting on the tripod costs for the tripod. So this costs about 500 bucks. This costs about 100 bucks. This is much heavier duty, heavier grade. It's all uh, aluminum construction. So it's got the rubberized grip there and just heavy duty. This is the Optex Black. Can't go wrong with this. It it's very tall, so it can go up to, I think, six and a half feet or something like that. And, uh, you know, I'm not worried at all. It's got the bubble level on there about dropping this thing. It's, uh, it's built to be very tough. You can step it up a lot more than this, though. You can spend up to four or $500 on a tripod if you really wanted to. But I wouldn't suggest doing that just for YouTube. This is all you're going to need. Now, it is heavy, so this is something you're not going to be able to backpack in. For that, something like this might come in handy. Now, selfie sticks or bipods are also very useful in terms of stabilizing images. And, uh, you know, you can stick them in the ground, you can lean them up against stuff, they work. But honestly, I would recommend the Joby Gorilla Pod, especially if you're doing a lot of wilderness shots, because these things uh, are made for trees, basically. They can wrap around a lot of things. I've put this on bows, crossbows, bikes, uh, they can pretty much conform to anything you want them to, but they work excellent for trees. This is one of the medium sized ones from Joby. They're the ones who I think invented this Gorillapod technology. And you can get bigger ones too. And the next one I want to get is a little bigger. I think it costs about 80 bucks. I'll post links to those in the description. Uh, honestly, this is great. If you're going to want the one that's a bit bigger, if you're putting a DSLR on here, this I probably wouldn't entrust a DSLR on this just because it's too small. But um, you know, you'd want a, a bigger one that can handle the weight of that. So I think that's about it um, for what I have to say about YouTube camera gear. I'm not going to get into the video editing software that I use. There's a lot of different types of video editing software. You can get the Adobe Suite. You have to rent it now and. I didn't really like that idea of paying a monthly fee for something. If I buy a video editing program, I want to buy it outright. Now I will tell you what program I use. It's called Magix Video Edit Pro and it's it's fairly user friendly. Um, actually I'd say it's quite user friendly. There's It's not as capable as Adobe but it's close. You know it, it's very uh, professional in terms of the stuff you can do you can mix and match a lot of the effects to get the equivalent of what you would be able to achieve on the uh, using the adobe uh, premiere pro or whatever it's called uh, but or after effects but it takes a bit more work to get there but it's a much more cost effective it runs i think maybe 100 150 bucks you can step it up to the professional versions of the program to three four hundred dollars but that's not really necessary for YouTube unless you're really wanting to do some really slick looking stuff. I also use a lot of stock photo websites. A lot of the photos that you see are licensed from uh, the artists themselves. And I do that through the various stock photo websites. There's uh, other video stock footage websites out there that you can get uh, those things from as well. And there's another website called Fiverr, F-I-V-V-E-R. So if you want an intro made for your channel, you can go there and they'll make intros for you. It's a bunch of independent artists and there's just lots of different, you know, templates to choose from and stuff like that. So that's about the extent of what I use right now. Like I said, I know this might seem overwhelming. I don't want you to feel that you have to rush out and get all this stuff. If you just have a smartphone and you have ideas and you have personality, people are gonna watch your videos regardless of what you shoot them on. This is just stuff that you eventually get into when you start doing more outdoor gear reviews, uh, things of that nature. So, you know what? Just uh, focus on what you need right now. Get this stuff as you need it. The one thing I would recommend above all else, of all things here, is a good tripod, and a good DSLR camera. You cannot go wrong with this camera. It's a 21 megapixel camera, I believe. Uh, comes with the 18 to 55 millimeter uh, lens built in. This is the VR2 kit. 
and you, you just will never go wrong with that. Not only for making YouTube videos, but just for taking amazing quality pictures of your family, you know, uh, when you go out traveling, stuff like that. So definitely check that out. Get a good tripod. And if you want a great action cam, the SJ cam is an excellent purchase, the M20. One final piece of kit that you don't see here is my lighting and green screen setup that I purchased from Cowboy Studios. You can buy uh, the lights separate if you don't want the green screen. I would recommend a green screen if you like to do a lot of in front of the camera type stuff. It allows you to change out the backgrounds and just makes your videos potentially more engaging and more interactive if you wanted to perhaps put a background of something that you were talking about you know and the magics program i was talking about has a chroma key feature so it allows you to block out one color of the image basically how a green screen works is that you can only use it of course if you're not wearing green because any green that you're wearing will be omitted from the image basically it omits anything that's green in the image even if you don't have a green screen you're definitely going to want a decent lighting setup because that can make all the difference in terms of the information that your camera is going to be able to sense and pick up so definitely uh, invest in a good lighting setup if you plan on doing a lot of indoor stuff with you in front of the camera so let me know if you have any questions in the comments thanks for watching i hope this was useful don't forget to like comment subscribe canadian prepper out Check out the Canadian Preppers Network blog, an excellent resource for survivalists and preppers.